Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Tyler's Yarns. Um, I was away last week. Um, had a whole lot of just like personal stuff to do and things like that. Um, but I'm back this week with um, Brooke. Hey, guys. How are you going? So we're going to start with, um, the convo off with um, what's one good thing that happened to you today? Or well, this week, sorry. This <laughs> week, I went to the footy. I went to Hawthorne versus Collingwood on the weekend. And, um, yeah, we lost, but... How much did you lose by? I didn't get to watch four, the game. Four points. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I nearly got into a fight with one of the Collingwood supporters. Classic. <laughs> Why? Yeah, he was just, like, he was just angry because he was, like, losing in the last quarter. Yeah. And he listened into our conversation and then, like, wanted to have a go. And, I, and we were just, like, relaxed, man. It's just a game. Yeah, it's just a game. That's annoying. I yeah. hate when people do that. It's so, so bad. Actually, so, mate, so fucking just had the footy, man. Yeah, just chill. Ch- and wasn't he with his family? Yeah, he's like 65, and, and he was with like his wife, who was like also pretty old, and his son, who was like 40, 45. Oh, yeah. Classic Collingwood supporters. <laughs> yeah. Um, one good thing that happened to me this week, I've nearly finished this place. So, we're doing the podcast in my new crib now. Um, but yeah, pretty much almost set up. I think I've just got to buy a rug. Um, I've got to buy a mirror for the main room. But other than that, and just like, um, I think, and more movie posters. So you can, as you can see, if you're watching us on YouTube behind us, we've got a couple movie posters. We're going to try and make it a bit more vibey, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to look sick, I think. Yeah, it's already looking pretty good. We got, a, we got a pretty good episode this week as well. Yeah. Do you um, want to talk about the episode? Yeah, so we're going to go, to go into like more of a sustainability kind of podcast. Um, look into like fashion and sustainability. I think it's really important. I think because that's one of our main sort of values at Official Vintage is well, sustainable fashion and ethical fashion as well. That's what we push a lot on our Instagram and stuff like that. And I think this is like a perfect topic for the podcast. What, what yeah, podcast and what our brand stands for. Yeah, but like going into that official vintage it does mean a lot to us sustainability yeah like you hear about all all our youtubes all our podcasts we we go over it time and time again and it's just like yeah Yeah, because like the clothing industry in general is probably one of the most toxic when it comes to um not being sustainable yeah i think well at the moment it's like it's not like sort of when you're in the 90s and it was hard to mass produce stuff where now you could literally, anyone could go onto the internet and get a print of anything on a t-shirt for like 10 bucks. Yeah, but Which, like there's like there's also like millions of stores that yeah. are doing that as well. That's what I mean. So I think it would be good to like get into it, get into the like the nitty gritty of everything um, about sustainable fashion and yeah, the goods, or just the, yeah, the goods of it. And like why it's important to us as a vintage company as well. Yeah. I think that's really important that we we get on that kind of topic of um Well just just even education for you guys so you yeah. understand what what um fast fashion is and what actual sustainable fashion is and what's the difference between the two. Yeah, and vintage is by nature just like passing on um what used to be the trend to yeah. like now. So yeah, it's pretty much just like passed on by generation like oh yeah. my dad used to wear that oh my dad used to wear that you know it's like pass on of generations and stuff. yeah and that's what we get to do with like official vintage as well um you can kind of see um a trend that was happening maybe when your mum and dad were younger and like you they passed it down to us through vintage which is really cool and you see that through the store um people coming in with their parents and and like their dad will be like, oh, I used to wear this in the 80s. Classic comment. Yeah. Every dad. The and then they get to um, show like their kids what they wore and then their mm. kids start to wear it. Yeah, that's why I love vintage. I think that's why I got into the game personally. I like all that sort of stuff. And I, the main reason I probably got into the, stain, the game was because of sustainability. Um, it's good for the environment. And yeah, like streetwear and fast fashion – these days are nothing compared to vintage as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, some streetwear some companies, street companies, like, yeah. they do really well. And, and, and I think we'll, we'll get into that, I think, later on in yeah. the episode. We'll maybe, like, go through some companies that we, we like and yeah. that sort of stuff. And I think something that's not put across is that 
fast fa- like fast fashion does contribute so much to like Landfill. our environment. Yeah, landfills. It's like yeah, crazy it's, amount. Yeah, and it's like even just the water usage. Yeah, water usage to make denim, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Is, People don't realise how crazy it is and I think um, this is why we're doing the podcast and it's good. This will be good for us, I reckon, and like get get some actual education on um, sustainable fashion. Yeah, and I think as well, um, just going into like the reasons why people should kind of buy vintage is because it is the sustainable option out of yeah. all the choices. But that's why uh, like you can even sort of see it happening now um, everyone's starting to push for sustainable stuff. A lot more people like voting for greens and like yeah. all that sort of stuff. But like people are trying to push for a sustainable future. So a lasting be, one. Yeah. So we can be on this world for a long time. Like, cause at the rate it's going, we're not. We're going to be on well. Mars soon. <laughs> yeah. Literally at the rate it's going, we're not, we're not doing too well, you know? Yeah. But I think that like if you educate people, even the younger people listen to this podcast, they, yeah, I think they'll learn a lot from it and be like, when they're going to go buy a shirt from somewhere that's actually in the back of their head. Yeah, and I would argue that vintage um, in Australia or just in general, like anywhere, never really goes out of fashion. Yeah, I like think that's the big thing about vintage is there's always trends, but um, yeah, it never goes out of fashion. Um, Especially with people like on TikTok and stuff, just like they're posting so much like cool content with like, I see people who literally wear stuff that, like, my grandma used to wear, but they make mm. it look cool. Yeah, that's like, pretty much it. I like, we're in an age with, like, TikTok, Instagram and stuff where um, there's a lot of, like, fashion inspiration and vintage is the biggest part behind that as well. Like, you see a lot of fits with a vintage tee now, yeah. um, vintage jeans, like... You know what I mean? That's, I think, the way we're going. Even, like, Nike are bringing out all their vintage shoes because people are styling their vintage wares with, like, their old vintage shoes. So Nike are encouraged to, to bring out more sh- vintage shoes. You know, older, older... Um, style. Older style shoes, just re-releasing them from, like, 10 yeah. years ago. Which you see a lot of shoes, at th- even last year. Um, yeah, a lot of shoes last year they were re-releasing from like 2005 or like the dunks and stuff. Yeah, and that's and just... And like crazy colorways, which is cool to see. And that's just like a compliment to f- uh, vintage fashion at the moment. Yeah. Like so many people are wearing it that they have to accommodate the shoe wear yeah, that's, for the clothing. Yeah, it's huge. What do you reckon about all the stuff that's happening with StockX and Nike at the moment? Yeah, I, I think that... Are you talking about like the authentication the and stuff? Yeah, authentication. Yeah, I think that I think no matter like where you get your shoes from, there's always a chance that yeah, they're not. Be fake. Yeah. yeah, and it, as much as we want, it, like I think everyone wants to point the finger at one person. It's I don't think that's entirely fair. Yeah. in some way, I think it'll be interesting. Maybe we will have a talk about it in a few weeks because like yeah. eBay's just brought in their new authentication program as well. I've heard so, that that's pretty good, and apparently it's pretty good. Um, yeah. We had a guy on the podcast two weeks ago, Tom Jessup. He um he brought a pair of uh, waffles from the seventies. Um, if you know your shoes, like one of the first Nike, Nike. big big shoes, um, and they authenticated it. They had to get a whole bunch of history up for it and stuff, which was super cool. Yeah, that's that's cool that eBay are doing it. I think I think we just need more platforms to like authenticate stuff. Even with like vintage now, it's getting like that as well. So it would be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah. A lot of people, like a lot of people, are faking vintage, like wrap like tees and expensive, like Nirvana tees and stuff like that, or even like Nike bootleg. Yeah, like Nike bootleg. I've so. seen some. Um, I won't name the companies, but some Australian companies doing like fake Nike vintage, yeah. like bootleg stuff. It's just ruining kind of like. Yeah, Nike sweaters and yeah, I yeah. see that all the time. But oh, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, but it'd be cool if there was a way where you could authenticate it. But that's like they're saying with the fast fashion, they're just mass producing all these fakes. Yeah. As well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And And it goes for everything. If you're a vintage company, it goes for everything you stand for is like down the drain. Yeah. And it's weird when you see like vintage companies doing that. Yeah. Because it's like you're you're fighting for sustainability but <laughs> you're like Then you're just getting fakes that are not even bootleg. It's just like fakes. Yeah. Fakes Which, that are made pretty much a week ago. You yeah. You know what I mean? And embroidered in. But they're saying that it's real. Yeah. Yeah, I don't love that. Do you want to get into that a bit more? 
Uh, yeah, we can like um, like grain washing. Yeah, like a uh, vintage. Yeah, like if you lot- haven't heard heard of um grain washing, um, pretty much what it means. Do you wanna? Yeah, so pretty much what grain washing means is it's essentially saying creating something that is likewise to vintage. So gives the look of vintage, but they're, what they're saying is it is vintage, but it's not. Yeah. So they're just pretty much claiming that it's vintage. Mm. But the same thing is with um, sustainable fashion. There's a lot of companies out there um, that say they're ethically making stuff, um, like making sure, like saying it's recycled, it's eco-friendly and stuff, when they're actually not. Yeah. And they're sort of just lying to the consumer which I think a lot of people lose a lot of trust in even smaller companies because of that. Yeah, and, and it's not fair on the companies that are doing the right thing, I think. It, yeah. it gives like quite a bad name mm. to like those companies that are doing the right thing who like even, uh, what's the New Zealand company that um, they have like a new section in, in their um, store and it's actually real vintage. Oh, uh, yeah. Glassons. Glassons or something, yeah. yeah. They... um. So they have a section which is really cool about vintage in their store. It's real vintage. They get it um, from the US and I think that's dope that they have that. Yeah, definitely moving into like forward with like fast fashion or whatever. You yeah, know what I mean. and then there's companies. Like they, yeah, it's like, good. Yeah, there's companies like, uh, like Zara. Yeah, so pretty much like companies that are sort of faking it. Yeah. With a lot of their stuff. Zara, I've heard a lot of stuff. They s- promote, they've got a lot of recycled stuff when they don't at all. Um, do your yeah. research behind that. But um, another ASOS color, they do bring out a lot of recycled lines, which are legit. But then uh, there's other stuff that they're just trying to like get k- clickbait yeah. for it as well. Yeah. And and with all that stuff as well, it's like, why go to, the, go to all that hassle? I don't get it. Like, why go to all that hassle? To like fake it when you're selling all the new shit anyway. Yeah. But it's like another big brand is like Boohoo as well. Yeah. They do the exact same thing where it's like, oh, this is made with 100% cotton or whatever, but it's actually not. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, do they put that on the tag? Do you yeah, know? they like full on put it on the tag and stuff. But like as soon as you'd get it, you'd know. Like, Yeah, you know quality as well. Yeah. But I think, I think with green washing, I actually see a lot more companies doing that because it it's... It, it's what sells at the moment, like vintage sells. Yeah, and, for sure. And people, if they think that it's like vintage, some people will just buy it because they think vintage is cool. Yeah, and for then, sure. And then they just like, it's just not the product that they're after. And I think a lot more companies will do it because a lot, like the world is just moving towards that greener energy kind of life. Yeah, for sure. Um, but like maybe let's move on to some. We we're talking about it before. We we're talking about other brands, like positive, positive like influence yeah. brands. Maybe, do you know any that are like super positive? Yeah, positive for the environment. Um, doing good things. Cause I've got a couple. Yeah, so I know that there is um, a local brand in Melbourne. It's called um, Push Pull. Yeah, we love um, Push Pull. They're good friends of ours. Yeah, they're pretty awesome people. They're very community based. Um, great brand they they've done heaps of good things in the past like they've put um i think like it was like a hundred or something garments in an op shop or something yeah i think they did just did a couple i'm pretty sure maybe oh, not a hundred i think it's just like five or ten. Oh, still pretty good yeah considering their like sweaters are 150 bucks yeah so good but like even just like stuff like that where they've um kind of given back to the community and they're making their kind of items a future op shop piece yeah for sure future op shop piece and like long term yeah and then they're not making like a thousand sweaters either they're making like what sells so it's not it is a little bit kind of it's not really fast fashion because they're not making like an abundance of it where there's heaps of leftover they're just making what they need yeah for sure and I've talked to them about it before where they've said, yeah, they only make enough that they need as well and they're not trying to yeah. go and down that route. And they only make limited runs of stuff as well, which is another thing. Yeah, and they started off as like, which is interesting about their company, is they started off as a vintage like company. company. So they started when you started, right? Yeah. 
and then they just kind of moved into their own garments but I think they really stuck to their roots and kept their sustainability and like um yeah sustainability um and community vibe yeah at yeah. the core of their, um, yeah, their values which I think so if you do get the chance um check out push pull on Instagram they do really cool stuff I definitely recommend buying their sweater I've got a sweater um but yeah sick support your local brands yeah um Another brand that I like as well, it's from New York, it's um, Noah. Um, yeah, they're surf, skate inspired. They're a super cool brand. Um, yeah. yeah, they do a lot of real cool stuff with like even political stuff or yeah. like say at the moment there's a war going on, like the Ukraine thing. They did a whole garment just for that and all the uh, all the proceeds went 100% to um, the the, war. Yeah, to the war foundations or whatever. Um, so that's cool. They do a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, the creative, creative director of Supreme started Noah. Noah? Yeah, yeah. So he, he was, he used to do, um, he used to be the boss. Yeah. Cre- of yeah. yeah. Creative director of, um, Supreme, Supreme and which then is huge. So like they would have learned a lot, but another buzzy thing that I heard about Supreme is they only had like a team of 10 yeah. people, 10 staff for a huge company. But they started real small, right? Yeah, so they used to be a surf shop, uh, a skate shop, sorry. Yeah. And then they just got massive because of the hype. But so, yeah, Noah, um, you can see a lot of the um, stuff's very similar to Supreme. Yeah. Like surf skate vibe. It's... um. But they do a lot of, all their pretty much garments are made out of like organic fabrics. Um, yeah, 100% like compostable, like plastic bottles and stuff they made the garments out of. Yeah. But that's cool that he went from, like, Supreme to, like, the creative director of Noah. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think that's cool. And I think, again, like, just bringing over core values. Yeah. Because even Supreme, they don't make that much stuff. No, nah, because they only run limited runs, and that's why yeah. there was so much hype behind it. But then they were getting to a point where they were doing two drops a week and stuff, and then yeah. that's when you start getting into, like, a sort of danger zone of, oh, are we selling too many garments or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? And then they oversaturate themselves in the future. Yeah, I don't think they've oversaturated themselves now, though. I think they've kind of pulled back a little. Yeah, they pulled. They had. They had to pull back. So when they sold, um, people stopped buying the stuff. And now, now that they've like sort of gone back to basics, actually, people are starting to buy Supreme pieces again. Yeah, that's cool, though. Yeah, because I, I think they lost who they were, and then I think now they're like getting back to. I think, Basics. I think that's kind of the journey though like a lot of people start their company off um kind of they're like building just like this crazy company and they get to the top and then they're like how the hell did we get here kind yeah, of thing then how the hell are we going to sustain this as well yeah. is another thing and then they drop drop back a little bit and then they're like all right we can climb again you know mm, for I sure know. i think it's, it's all waves but i think another brand in melbourne as well called um homey they've got a place in brunswick um, they do a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Um, all their items are a hundred percent um ethically sourced in Australia. Oh yeah. Like in the fabric. Um, but they've got yeah, they've got they do, do a lot for charity. All their a hundred percent of their profits go to homelessness and youth yeah. um, that are affected by homelessness. Um so that's a massive that's so sick. Yeah, such a good company and they've been around for a long time, but they're a massive Melbourne Melbourne based company, good values. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of brand you sort of want to be like, you know, you want to yeah. be like giving back to the community, like Push Pull, like Noah, all these brands have got good core values and they're sustainable. Yeah. And that's what I look for that type of stuff as well when I go shopping. Uh, I always like, um, I always try to look at the company and like, how they source their stuff. Yeah. Because, like, more recently I'm, like, just becoming aware of, like, sustainability. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just trying to, like... Well, maybe because you've probably worked here for, like, a couple of years now and you're actually yeah. getting into it, you know? Yeah, and, and I, like, a lot of my tops and sweaters and stuff are from Official Vintage, but, like, when I'm looking at jeans and stuff, I try to go for kind of the, mo- like the more lasting jeans or... Yeah. Or trackies that I know that I'm going to keep for like the next ten years, whatever. Yeah. I think there's another gene place called Nobody Denim. I yeah. think they're doing a pop pop up in Fitzroy, but they're working with a lot of um, tech brands at the moment because a lot of denim, like to make denim, is very hard, yeah. and it's like a lot of water, a lot of um, a lot of car, like whatever carbon. 
but <laughs> maybe I don't. Heap, heaps of water. Yeah. I think it's like, it's like over it's three thousand. Three thousand seven hundred yeah. to make any any um yeah denim pieces crazy, but they're trying to reduce reduce the um what carbon emissions they're bringing into the thing because yeah. I know it's like denim's so hard to fucking make, but yeah. yeah they're working with a lot of tech companies to um reduce that, which is cool. Even like the old Levi's and stuff. Yeah, I don't think the new ones are as good as the old ones. Yeah, but um all of the old Levi's like we have a few of them in store. And they they look sick. They yeah. they've like they've lasted ages, for but, sure. But it's it's good just to see that, and then know like some brands. I wish I do wish that a lot of brands went back to how they used to like create stuff. Yeah, like Nike. It's just too much. They don't, they only do it because it's too much money. Yeah, heaps of profit. Yeah, they just lose too much profit if they go back to making things like a hundred percent cotton or whatever. Yeah. But realistically, people will buy a lot more stuff from you. I think. Yeah, I think Even that... Like, yeah, just less runs. Yeah, and I think that, like, if... I think if every company went back to 100% cotton, I think they would sell a lot less because their T-shirts would last, last a lot longer. A lot that's longer. probably... That's that's a problem with the sustainable fashion as well. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, these, these companies only have T-shirts that are going to last five months. Yeah. And they're like, oh, then they'll just come back in five months to buy a new one. That's what we're trying to stop. People were trying to give like educate people to be like, oh, buy these vintage items. Yeah, you, I'll see you in a year's time when you actually just want a new tea, yeah. and you can still have the old one that's not ripped apart. Or then, or even like in saying that, you can say, oh, um, if you come back in six months, I'd probably trade with you. Yeah, I'll trade it in with like, or oh, it st- it keeps its value as well. Yeah. which you can't be like, oh, I'm gonna go buy a t shirt from a shop. Um, say a big franchise or whatever and then yeah. it rips apart in six months and they wouldn't do anything they'd be like oh no or like out. a fake vintage piece from Cotton On yeah fake vintage piece <laughs> as well and then you, they come in store like uh, try, to sell it. try to sell and be like that's not even vintage yeah. literally like people have t- tried to do that before as well yeah but yeah yeah so like I think the sustainability is like just I, I I think that the way we could solve the problem is if everyone went back. Yeah, everyone went back. <laughs> like um, 10 years. Yeah, ten, 15 years. Yeah. Started making like, the things they used to make. Even, um, yeah, shopping locally. Like yeah. making sure you're supporting local brands in your state, your area, or your country or whatever. Yeah. Um, because they yeah, need the support. And if they're doing everything sustainable, you'd got to start weighing it up yeah what's better i'm going to support this local brand that's just starting up um these t-shirts are sustainable um like say we're a vintage company these t-shirts are sustainable and they're going to last forever or go to this big company yeah it's probably getting the shirt for one dollar most of the shirts end up being in a landfill for after six months and yeah Oh, well, like all um, shirts take up to like 40 years to decompose in landfills. Yeah. So if you think about that, that's, that's, a, that's a long fucking time. Yeah. And that's only once they're in the landfill. It's not like if you've been wearing it for 40 years. Yeah, like... Like that's just it's sitting the there just like decomposing. Mm. Yeah, that's what I mean. How many... Um, like, there's, yeah, there's massive landfills in like a lot of the third world countries with... Yeah. Just massive rag landfills. Yeah. It's crazy. Imagine the stuff you would find in there though. Yeah. Like <laughs> if old. you went thrifting. Like yeah, go thrifting in the um in the landfill. I'd suggest like buying vintage. Yeah. Like as a vintage core. or pre loved um yeah. pre loved pieces, like whether that's at an op shop or you go to a market like Campbell Market or whatever Glead Market, wherever you're from. Yeah. Yeah. And and then you go, I think if you do all that stuff and um, it doesn't matter where, what vintage shop, like you don't have to shop with us, although we do, <laughs> we do have the best vintage shop in Australia, yeah. but, um, but yeah, any, like your local vintage shop you could go down to and, and just have a look at um, what they have in store. Like in Melbourne, there's like six, seven vintage shops mm. and they're all located within half an hour of each other. Like there's heaps of options that you can go to 
um, that provide like pretty decent stuff. Yeah, for sure. I would say like that's probably, and you can go to like old, um, like older vintage stuff like as well, like uh, like seventies vintage and stuff. Because I know people are into that style. Yeah, seventies, eighties are coming in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just all trends, whatever. Yeah. And a lot of people in Melbourne are definitely try to push the fashion boundaries. So there's, there's a lot of um stuff you can wear, which is good. Yeah. Be, be unique. Be and unique. It's also different. Like if you're buying vintage. Um, it's just like different. Like you're just a bit different than everyone else. Yeah. Well, you've only got a shirt. Even at the store now, there's only one. I don't think we've got any double ups in the whole store, and there's five thousand items there. That's yeah. how crazy it is. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think. Yeah, that's just different. Like if you go to if you go to a festival, and you buy, so you go to Cotton On before the festival, and you buy a. Hawaiian sweat a t shirt or something, mm. I gu- I guarantee you you'll you'll see like five different people wearing the same thing. Yeah. Whereas like you buy like a t shirt from a vintage store, then people actually come up to you like complimenting you, being yeah. like, Oh, there's a sick T, where'd you get it from? Yeah. And yeah. and I've done that with like with some of my teas as well. Like people have come up to me and be like, That's a cool tea. Like well, when they start trying to buy it off you. No, nah, no one's ever done that. It has no one ever done that. No. It's happened to me heaps. I people, like pretty generic to, stuff though. Yeah. People come up to me like, oh, can I buy a tea? And I'm like, nah. I got a vintage store though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, but yeah. that's pretty much um, all I have for like sustainability and stuff. Yeah. We'll definitely touch on it a lot more, I think, in the future. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, make sure you like, subscribe to the video. Yeah. Um, Shop yeah. with Official Vintage. Shop with Official Vintage. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Um, if you want to hear about anything else leave it in the comments we'll just try to get as many podcasts as we can as possible Um, but yeah Yeah, I'm Tyler this is Brooke and yeah we're out